Chapter 5 Silence and Meditation Stillness is one of the most important attributes to bring out the magic in your mind. There is chaos and confusion in the world today. This mad state of affairs, together with the perpetual struggle for existence, we call living. It is not living. The world is too much with us. Most people are living at a breakneck pace, and their days and nights are crowded with things to be done or things they want to do. Aloneness is often very difficult to procure, and many would feel unhappy if they had it. Yet, if you are able to bring out the magic in your mind, you must, above all things, cultivate silence and meditation. What is meditation? It is the practice of mindfulness, attentiveness, awareness. It establishes an attitude of mind. In the stress and strain of life today, with Sputniks and atom bombs rending the air, loudspeakers tearing our ears, and a lot of other sounds, the voice of your subconscious goes unnoticed. Some of us cannot bear silence, or being alone more than a few minutes. This attitude must be broken down at once. The deep silence of a quiet place is something most of us have never known. How, then, can we hear the voice of our subconscious mind? We cannot. A quiet place is essential, and if you have not got one, you must remake your world. The task is nothing less than that. Noise saps your energy. Noise kills any chance of you being a magician. All of us at some time or another have been nearly driven mad by noise. The noise of cars revving up, radios blaring, a dog barking on and on, the noise of airplanes hour after hour, jukeboxes in every other cafe you go into, always a background of noise. The greatest people avoid from time to time the society of men and women. They get right away, either in a room of their own and lock the door, or they walk up a hill where they can sit and quietly meditate. Make yourself a study away from it all, even though it's only an attic room. Go to this retreat regularly, or if you cannot do this, go high up to some hill where you can sit alone. You must dwell alone with yourself for a little while every day. You must shut out all noises and listen to the voice of your subconscious, the voice of magic. You must always take that listening attitude as though you were expecting to hear. You cannot go into the silence as long as you are thinking about the world. You must silence your thoughts, empty your mind. You have allowed thoughts to come into your mind at any moment in any kind of thought, and you have to learn to control your mind. This is important. You have got to shut your mind to outside things. Every day you must work with it until you can sit in the silence for at least a half an hour go into the silence and listen every day until you can sit like that for one hour or better still two you must develop your sixth sense like this you are guided by your reasoning faculties you have to reason things out but if you would listen to the voice of your subconscious and pay attention to it you would be right every time You may reason things out, but they will never turn out as you think they will. It will not come right that way at all. Ask your subconscious to guide you, and it will do so. You would never make a mistake, no, never, if you were guided by your subconscious. Say with all your heart, let there be wealth, or let there be health, or anything else you want. 
and these things are bound to manifest. You must give a certain period each day to silence and meditation. Why must you do this? Because then you are converted into a transmitting station between your subconscious mind and yourself, your needs. Desire the conversation of none, just you and your subconscious talking things over together. You may say you have a lot to do in the home, your social life, the shop, in the factory or at the office, and you must press on as hard as you can to accomplish the task. But though it would seem the best possible thing to do, it is not. Call a halt now and again. Be still. Listen. Your load will be lightened. You will see how best to complete your work without effort. Many tycoons do this. They slip into their office quietly for a while, refusing to see anyone. They have a period of quiet meditation, and that's how they get on, and how they become millionaires. Do I do this at home or backstage? Of course I do. There are times when I won't see anyone backstage, however eager the caller. I always take quietness before a performance. More particularly, if I'm going to read minds. Stillness is an essential to any workable system of magic. Until this condition of self-disciplined solitude is achieved, it is useless to attempt any magical operation. You have been told how the master psychologist who worked more dynamic magic than anyone has ever done was reputed to have ascended a hill often to be alone for long periods in order to become reinforced. It is absolutely essential that you cultivate the art of stillness physically and mentally. Like this your subconscious can give you ideas so illuminating that success in whatever you are doing is a certainty. You need not be defeated by anything. You will get success techniques so that you become devastatingly sure of yourself. Suddenly you are conscious that you are listening. It hardly seemed audible, yet you are sure you heard a whisper. But you are not quite certain. What you are certain of is an impelling urge, a certain impulse to act, to do something, to go somewhere, to, to, or to see someone. You feel guided. You know you must act on this guidance. You have a hunch, a premonition, and you must act on it. You are able to check on favourable conditions. You are able to surmount difficulties. And you are able to overcome hardships. You are directed. You are your own creator. You are your own authority. The first thing to do on entering your study or when sitting alone on the hill, is to listen to your subconscious. Write the thoughts that come to you in a notebook, which we're going to keep for that purpose, and be guided by them. Not leaving out a bit here and there, because it is not what you'd like. Carry out the guidance absolutely, but always use discernment, your own discernment, no matter what you hear. You will get suge suggestions to come somewhere do something. Go where you were told and do what you were impressed to do. Let your subconscious take full charge. You will then be guided to meet the people you should meet to help you or influenced to go to a certain place at a certain time. I knew someone who was told to go to a certain place at a certain time and he went. There he met a man he had not seen for many years, a man who was able to book him up for a long series of lectures. He was a lecturer, and this meant big money for him. Listen, and you will be told what books to read, what magazine, what newspaper, and if you act under guidance, you will find something to help you in them. If you go to a party or a meeting, on entering the room, ask your subconscious who you should sit next to, 
and you will be told and you will find that you are sitting next to somebody who offers help or to someone you can offer help. I have done this many times and it always works out right. In the silence of your room, your subconscious will take you above the pairs of opposites, good and bad, and you will know and practice good only. You will gain the single eye and become positive, blind to any form of negative thinking. With meditation, you will be rightly directed. By contemplation, you gradually become purified, like the firewalkers. You will feel ashamed to do or speak or think anything unworthy. You will shrink back from evil. You will feel inspired to high endeavours. The more often you visit your retreat, the more you will like it. The less you go, the more you will loathe it. The more often you go to it, the greater comfort it will become. Shut your eyes to outward things. Prepare yourself more and more by daily practice for the receiving of magical power. Ask your subconscious to grant you, grant you understanding. Reflect on your past negative outlook with great displeasure and grief, but let it go. Examine your conscious and to the utmost of your power make it pure and clear. Images are the language of your subconscious. If you hold the image of yourself as successful and prosperous as you meditate, it will deeply penetrate into your subconscious mind and, if strong enough and deep enough, will act as an automatic brake against bad and negative impulses. What has all this got to do with bringing out the magic in your mind? You are not concerned with character building, but working magic getting the things you want. Never forget the firewalkers. Again, I repeat, it is a matter of purifying yourself, or in today's language, raising your vibration to the highest possible. Listen to your subconscious during meditation. You will be told to pay that debt instead of buying the new shoes you would like. Anyway, after you have paid that debt, you can still ask your subconscious to get you the shoes. You may have to listen to things about yourself you don't like very much. You must listen, accept, and go right through with it. Or you must leave it alone. But you cannot work magic by doing only the things you like and leaving out the rest. You have the idea that, provided you know how to work magic, something may be got for nothing. You can never bring something into possession that you have not earned, either by good character or actions, or by matching the vibration of it and feeling good, believing it is already achieved. I know a woman who wanted a king-sized caravan. She meditated upon this. She was impressed with the idea that she should start collecting things for it. She bought a miniature shovel for the fire, a guest towel, a duster. Every time she went into town she bought some little thing because during meditation this idea came to her. The king size caravan came before long in quite a miraculous way. Her subconscious knew by her actions that she wanted it desperately and was prepared to buy little things to prove her eager eagerness. The same with a man I know who got a nice car. He bought some wool and made himself a carpet for the car because during meditation the idea was pressed home. He acted on it. The car came soon after, though at the time he could not see how he could have ever got it. Make your commands clear in every detail. Don't be like the woman who wanted a bowl of goldfish. She asked her subconscious for a bowl of fish and she meditated upon it day after day. Before very long, a neighbor knocked on the door. I bought you a bowl of fish, she said. Fred caught more than we could possibly manage to eat and she handed over a plastic bowl with two trout in it. So it had come, come true in every detail. The bowl, the fish, 
Had she asked for a glass bowl with water in it and goldfish swimming around in it, she would have got what she really wanted. Meditate. Meditate properly. An old peasant was seated alone in the last pew of the village church. What are you waiting for? I asked. I am looking at him, and he is looking at me, he said softly. This is called silent contemplation, and you can do this sort of contemplation with anything. Look at the thing you want. Contemplate it quietly by just looking. It will come if all else is right with you. You must meditate to get out of the jam you are in. The more you meditate, the more you become to have a horror of wrong action and take a greater and greater delight in generosity. Most men and women today have grown up with harassed expressions, lined faces, bustling, fretting, complaining, stressed out, bad-tempered and unhappy. This need not mean you. The secret lies in meditation, silence, stillness and solitude. Here lies the strategy that frees you from the bad, the sad, the mad. Perhaps you have grown irritated when the dinner is late, angry when the soup is too thick. Perhaps you have cursed when the coffee is cold or someone cut you off in traffic. Perhaps you have taken part in nagging because you are tired. Meditation will take away your tiredness. Meditation will lift you up. Let the meditation of your heart and the power of your word be good. Is it good? Is it kind? The more pure you are, the bigger magic you can do. You must try and refine yourself like gold in a furnace. You get nothing for nothing. You must earn it. Is all this a disappointment? Is it too much trouble? Is it too big a price to pay? I don't think so. You want to work magic of a spectacular kind, and these are the musts. Spacemen, searching distances almost too great for our imagination, find exquisite order, tidiness, and purpose in everything they see. Astronomers who discovered a new planet millions of miles away, weighing millions of tons and flying through space at thousands of miles an hour, find a wonderful order, never chaos. Everything follows clear-cut laws. Day after day, night after night, century after century, this wonderful world goes on working in perfect harmony. Only man makes chaos and disharmony. Only man breaks the laws. Meditate upon this. Determine there will be no more chaos in your life. No more muddling through. Lift your mind high, high above the stars and meditate. Get the sort of silence where you will hear your wristwatch ticking for the first time in years. In silence and confidence shall be your strength. Be still and know that I am God. Unless the mind is still, you cannot see anything. Silence guides my body. This thought transmission between you and your subconscious during meditation is recognized by the Tibetans. At the close of day, they invoke peace to the vegetables, peace to the animals, peace to the elements, peace to the living, peace to the non-living, and peace to all. This thought transmission is stronger the purer you are the higher your vibration is, for then you can submit waves of higher frequency. Waves transmitted by silent meditation are more powerful and far-reaching than waves of the spoken word. Sometimes two people can meet and convey a terrific lot without saying a word. You 
can get a message over stronger and surer by silence than by words. Meditate, you must go into the silence. To fly properly, even aeroplanes spend most of their time on the ground. Stillness, silence, solitude. Make a break with the nev negative past as clean as amputation. You mean it? I've got to be quiet, quiet, quiet? It's true, friend. People who do brave things and great deeds meditate. And they listen in to their subconscious. The great explorer and commanding officer of the United States Antarctic Service Expedition, Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, broadcast on the eve of his departure to the Antarctic. It was on my lonely vigil during the long polar night that I learned the power of silence. The values and the problems of life sorted out when I began to listen. See what I mean? I am not an Antarctic explorer. I explore the mind. And if you want to know how I came to do that, I will tell you. I was a paratrooper in the war and was shot down three times. I spent a year in hospital for a long time unresponsive to any treatment. But later I became master of my own and returned myself to health by a sustained application of physiotherapy, psychiatry and psychology. Stacks of books on psychology were given to me at the hospital. I used to sit up in bed and read them one after the other, completely fascinated, determined to master it all. I was particularly interested in the subconscious mind and its untapped potential and studied everything I could get hold of on the subject. Let me quote what I said in the Halifax Daily Courier and Guardian, September the 6th, 1957 The voice of the subconscious is the greatest power in any one body and if only people knew how to use this power they could have anything they wanted in from life provided they knew first in their hearts that their particular ambition or wish was within the realms of possibility Another way of saying this is, therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye meditate, visualize, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. There may be a price to pay, but there is no limit to, her, to the horizon if people would allow their subconscious to guide them. Brick walls there will always be, but there is always a way to the other side. You may think this is a bit fanciful, too good to be true, but I crawled over that brick wall and out of hospital. It all comes under that one word, belief. I had plenty of time to meditate in that hospital bed for 12 long months. Shell shock is a, is a terrible thing. And I asked myself, why did this have to happen to me? You get all your answers in the silence. I know that meditation is soothing a comfort to one in distress and it brings magic into your life, I know, because it's wonderfully true.